All right. Can everybody see? Give me a thumbs up uh, on your on your Zoom screen. Uh, there happens to be annotate. No, not annotate. But anyway, wave at me if you can see this. That's good. Okay. S resistors that we've played with so far. Can you hear me? Okay. By the way. All right, so the resistors that we've played with so far have been connected in a series fashion. An alternate way of hooking up resistors is in parallel. And the analogy I gave you a week, over a week ago about parallel was how the Christmas tree lights, modern Christmas tree lights are connected together, where if one bulb goes out, the string remains on. Whereas in a series connection, if one bulb goes out, they all turn off. So if you take a look at the illustration in the PowerPoint, you can see why that happens. Take a look at the battery and the three lamps that are lit. From the battery, and they're showing these yellow arrows leaving the positive side of the battery, and they are going out uh, with this red line, and the red line goes through the first bulb, and then splits goes through the second bulb, and then splits and goes through a third bulb. And in the return path for each of these, uh, the electricity is, it flows th from the third bulb to this wire here where it joins with a wire from the second bulb and these two currents combine. And as they combine, they will continue flowing until they see this wire from the uh, next lamp and more current combines until they go back to the source. So real quick question. Question goes to Mr. Benavetti's. Which model of current is being demonstrated in this illustration? Is it whole current or electron current? Whole current. Whole current, because whole current, how, how do we identify this as being whole current, Jackie? It goes from the positive end of the battery. Exactly. The current that leaves the positive side of the battery is called whole current. The current that leaves the negative side of the battery is called electron current. And Brad, what do you remember, or in your, in your journal, was the alternate name for whole current? Was it conventional current? Conventional current is correct. Very, very good. Now, aren't you all glad you have some of these terms written down in your journal for handy reference? And I said, anything that you have in your journal that you've written in there, aside from two cards, you can use on a quiz or a test. All right, so take a look at this illustration back in the PowerPoint. If one lamp were to burn out, let's say this first one on the left, I'll call that the first lamp. If that one burns out, it's completely open, the filament's gone. There is no current flowing through that lamp. It is off, it is burnt out, it is not lighting up. Do we still have paths that will allow electricity to flow through the second and the third lamp? Do they still exist? They do. And so in a parallel circuit, because we have alternate paths that leave the source, go through the loads and then come back to the source, we have this model that we've been using for the modern Christmas tree lights. Now there are some formulas that are associated with this and the most, the, the, the singular formula that I want to impress upon you uh, for just a few minutes uh, today is how to calculate total resistance. How to calculate total resistance. And <clears throat> there's a formula right here. You see this RT is equal to one over and let me magnify this just a touch for you if I can. Right here, if you can see this right there on your screen. RT is equal to one over, open parentheses, one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over Rn. And N means the last resistor of four, five, six resistors you might have in parallel. <clears throat> Okay, let's see how we apply this. If we take a look at, let me bring the uh, zoom back down. And let's go to here. Okay, there's a definition for parallel. And the definition for parallel 
and cannot go back in. That's weird. I uh, hope he can rejoin us. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, he just got bumped off and let's see, he can't come back in. Uh, please try again. Please try again. And hopefully we can see him come back on. We'll see. Anyway, the definition of parallel is, if we read this through, and this definition should be in your journals uh, soon, if it isn't already, devices are stated as being in parallel, and it says, if and only if. That's an absolute condition. If and only if two conditions are satisfied. One condition says right here that the leads on one side of these devices has to meet at one common node, and then you see the word and. A second condition must also exist, and that is the leads where on the other side of these devices meet at a different common node. So imagine for a moment, imagine for a moment, uh, I'm gonna take us off the shelf for just a moment. And as we look at speaker view, here we are. Imagine for a moment I have a resistor and imagine for a moment I have a resistor. And if they are fastened together on one end at some common node and they're fastened together on the other end at another common node in my other hand, I'm trying my best to do this, how about like this? Are these devices fastened on the left-hand side to a common point? Are they fastened on the right-hand side to another common point? If they are, then their relationship from an electronic standpoint is designated as being parallel. Let me show you another example. If I do this, Let's see if I can do this well or not. Okay, this is good. All right, take a look at these. Imagine these are resistors, and are these devices connected to my left hand? One side of these devices is connected to my left hand. One side of these devices is connected to my right hand. They are electrically in parallel with each other. Are they visually in parallel with each other, or is one looking like it's a little bit of a zigzag? one looks like it's a little bit of a zigzag. So the visual appearance is not as important as the definition for parallel. The, this, this visual arrangement fulfills the definition of parallel, even though one is at zigzag. So they are in parallel. Now, there's a nickname. There's a nickname for parallel. Uh, not there, whoops, cancel. Uh, go back to the share and go back to here because we'll be using these terms. There's a nickname for series circuits. Series circuits are have a nickname. What are they called? Strings. Why string? Because they're, they're likened to a string of pearls. When you think about a string of pearls or a string of any kind of beads, isn't there one string that holds a bunch of beads, one right after the other after the other? So that's kind of how series resistors are set up. That's also the, where the name, the nickname for series circuits come from is because the devices can be held together with one long string. Whereas parallel circuits have a different nickname. Parallel circuits are nicknamed banks banks and it's shown here in yellow highlight on the slide. Parallel circuits, sometimes they resemble a ladder. Sometimes the rungs of the ladder might be a bit of a zigzag to each other. Uh, however, the rungs of a parallel circuit have a very specific name also. They are called branches, okay? So this is the terminology that we will use. And there's one more observation here that's really important. Item number five on this slide says, our total for parallel will always be less than the lowest ohmic branch. So we're not just gonna add these numbers together. You do have, uh, it's a simple calculation, but there is a calculation and your our total will always, 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 that's why it's in caps, always be less than the lowest ohmic branch. And we'll see that in a moment in the next slide. So here's your next slide. And this slide goes to explain a couple of things. 
um, most importantly, a tap and a node. If I have a circuit that's drawn with two resistors here, they are visually in parallel with each other. They are also electrically in parallel with each other. Are the leads on the left-hand side connected to a common point? Yes. Are the leads on the right-hand side connected to a different common point? Yes. Therefore, these are electrically in parallel with each other. Take a look at the filled-in circle. The filled-in circle is called a node. The circle that's not filled in is a connection point, and the name for the connection point is called a tap. Okay, so we have a tap and a node shown in this illustration, and over here I have another tap, open circle, and I have a node, several nodes, shown with a closed circle. So some more terminology. And let's go ahead and show you how to do your calculation uh, with this keystroke sequence. And here are the buttons that you need to find on your calculator. On our calculator, the one that's uh, our $8.48 special, we have the X to the negative one power key. The X to the negative one power key is called reciprocal. And on some other calculators, it's shown as a one over X that is also called the reciprocal key. So there's reciprocal key is the name that gives us the mathematic function that is demonstrated by this button on your PowerPoint or this button on your PowerPoint. And so in the first example, we're going to have three resistors. And given three resistors, it says we have a 20 ohm resistor, a 40 ohm resistor and a 30 ohm resistor. And our task is to calculate the total for these. So the way that you do this is, and uh, I will go ahead and um, do this with you. Let me take, let me draw the circuit out. So we will have some, uh, let me go ahead and do this, this, and go take off of this share and let us go to uh, camera mode. And here's the camera mode. All right, so in camera mode, here's our document. And here is your circuit. So here is a resistor. Here is another resistor. And here is another resistor. And so given these three resistors, let's say that R1 is equal to 20 ohms, R2 is equal to 40 ohms, and let's say R3 is equal to 30 ohms. You are tasked with finding out what is RT going to be when measured between these two taps. So you're gonna put your ohm meter, ohm meter right here, and when you put your ohm meter here, you'll be able to measure the total ohms for this. Now, keep in mind, with parallel, you do not simply add this. You don't add 20 to 40, giving you 60, 60 plus 30, giving you a total of 90. What should the R total be based on the previous slide and what I have mentioned just a few moments ago? R total will always, for a parallel circuit, will always equal what? What was the terminology that was used? our total will always be equal to, in a parallel circuit, less than the lowest ohmic branch. Which one of these branches, here's a rung of a ladder, rung of a ladder, rung of a ladder. So we call these rungs in, par in electronics terms, branches. So I have a branch for R1, branch for R2, branch for R3. Which one of these has the lowest ohms? R1, and R1 has 20 ohms and our total ohms will be less than this guy. If it calculates to be something more than this, then we did something wrong in our calculator. And the keystroke sequence, keystrokes, not write it out this way, keystrokes, will be as follows. You will enter 20, so on my calculator, and my calculator on the side, I'm gonna uh, make sure it's on, make sure it's clear, I'm gonna enter 20. And then I'm going to hit this key here. And on our calculator, it's the X negative one, or on some other calculators, it could be one over the X key. It's one of those two. 
if you're using our calculator, it'll be the x negative one. And so by hitting 20 and hitting this, what we've done right here is created the one over 20. And then we're going to add this to the next resistor. And the next resistor is 40. So I'm going to hit the 1 over x right there on the calculator. Hit the 1 over x. And I'm going to hit the plus. So now I'm here. I'm going to key in 40 for 0. After I key in the 40, what I'm going to need to do is hit my x negative 1 key again. So 40, here's my x negative 1, tap it. Does it show up as a 40 with a uh, superscript 1 negative minus 1? And then the math function here is to add. And now so what I've created right here is 1 over 40. Okay. And now I'm adding it to the next one. So the ne last resistor here is a 30 ohm. So I'm going to do 30 and hit my 1 over x key again. So on my calculator, 30, oops, there, got too excited here, plus 30 and 1 over x. So what I've done up to this point is now have created this. I have 120, hit reciprocal, I've created this fraction, then plus. 40, hit the reciprocal key, I've created this fraction, then plus. Then 30, reciprocal, I've created this fraction. Now, after keying in all three of these with the reciprocal function, then what I'm going to do is hit the equal key. So while well, my display, I'm going to hit the equal key. And then I'm going to hit my reciprocal key again and then hit equals one more time. So here I'm gonna hit reciprocal one more time and hit equal key one more time. And when I come to do so, when I come to do so, what value do you calculate on your calculators? Wei Ji, do you have a calculation for me? Have you been following this with your calculator? Uh, no, I, I, got, I got kind of confused on this. Okay, let's clear my calculator and let me walk you through the sequence again. So everybody get your calculators ready because this is not a watch and admire. This is a watch and do. So you must be doing as uh, we're going through these lessons. Have your calculator aside. Punch in 20. Okay, so I am going to move this over. Have the calculator on the side right here where we can see it. And I'm going to clear the calculator. Here. And it says 20 in the reciprocal key. So here's 20. And there's my reciprocal key. I'm going to tap it. So after we have the 20 reciprocal, then what do I do? I hit the plus. You hit the plus right now. Then after the plus, it's a 40 reciprocal. So I'm going to key in 40 and the reciprocal key, followed by what? Another plus. So here's a plus. Then I'm going to key in 30. Hit my reciprocal key, nothing else to add. So then I do what? Hit equals, then followed by these two keys, reciprocal and equals. So reciprocal there and hit equals there. And what is it that you calculate? Isaac, what do you have on your calculator? Everybody should unmute your microphones, please, because there's a delay. You might be trying to talk to me, and we're, we're, we're chewing up time waiting for your microphones to come on. Rodrigo, what do you have for me? Uh, 9.23. Mm -hmm. uh, Brad, what do you have? I have 9.23 as well. Mm, Robert, what do you have? 9.23. Okay, what do you see on the display of my calculator? 9.23. Isn't that reassuring? <laughs> All right, so if you've done this correctly, if you've done this correctly, you will end up with a 9.23, and you write the omegas, and that would be your R total 
for this particular set of three resistors, okay? So what did we say? R total for any bank of parallel resistors must always be less than the lowest ohmic branch. And the lowest ohmic branch is here, and did R total calculate to be less than the lowest ohmic branch? Yes. And to help you follow through what happened with all of this is, remember, your formula for R total is here. R total is equal to 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 in this case. There's a name for this formula. This is called reciprocal formula. We will use it in other aspects of electronics, but this is called the reciprocal formula. And it's called the reciprocal because what we're doing is we're adding this reciprocal to this reciprocal, to this reciprocal, and the whole thing is a large reciprocal. Mathematically, what we've done is calculate this part of the denominator, add to this part of the denominator, add to this part of the denominator, which is here, 20 reciprocal plus 40 reciprocal plus 30 reciprocal. All of this is the denominator. When we hit equals, we have a value in the denominator, but we still have to put it underneath the divide by one. That's why we hit reciprocal and equals again. And that's how we end up with this. So the keystroke sequence is clearly defined in the PowerPoint. I encourage you to practice calculating from the PowerPoint. So from the PowerPoint, you had another example. This other example goes to show here is one of these, and I'm going to draw this a little differently. I'm going to draw it this way, and then draw this guy this way. And here's R1, here's R2, and here is R3. And I'm looking for an R total. So the question is, uh, let's give you the numbers. This guy is 980 ohms. This guy is 680 ohms. This guy is, oops, this guy is 470 ohms. And the last one is 680 ohms. So 980, 470, 680 for these three resistors. So which one of these is the lowest ohmic branch? The one in the middle. 470, so the R total should be less than this number. But as you look at this, do the three resistors look nice and pretty in the, as they do in the textbook? Does it look like they're in parallel with each other? Not in the strictest sense of parallel. No, you understand parallel lines as being never intersecting lines. So if I have a pair of in parallel lines, they will never touch each other. Do I have two resistors touching each other at the top? Yes, one's coming in at an angle, one's coming in straight up. They're clearly visually not in parallel with each other. But are they in parallel to each other from an electronic definition? From the definition that you have in your notes just a little while ago, and also in the PowerPoint, are the upper leads, that one there, and that one there, and this one here, are these upper leads connected to one common point, yes or no? Yes. Then you want to check and see if the lower leads are connected to another common point. So I'm going to highlight this in yellow. So this guy here, this guy here, and this guy here. Are they connected to a common point? Yes or no? And the answer here is they are because all of this that I've highlighted in yellow is one large point. I can show more than one node. But this is one common point. There is nothing other than wire between these nodes, which makes them electrically the same. So they are connected at the top with the blue highlight. They are connected on the bottom with the yellow highlight. At the top, I've only drawn one node. At the bottom, I've drawn three nodes. Doesn't matter. As I said, since there's no device between these nodes other than wire, they are one common point, okay? So these are, although they're not drawn in parallel with each other, 
they are electrically in parallel with each other. So our formula for R total is the reciprocal formula, one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3, and then the whole thing is reciprocated before we end up with R total. So we're gonna work on the denominator first before we reciprocate at the end. So what do we do? Keystroke sequence is 980. Do this now, because I'm gonna be looking for numbers. Everybody do this now. Key in this. As you do this now, 980, hit your reciprocal key, x negative one. So have we created the first reciprocal? One over R1 is 980 reciprocal. What's my math function here? It says I have to add this to the next reciprocal. So I must have an add function right here. What's my next reciprocal? I'm gonna write it underneath 470. So you key in 470 right now on your calculators. You tap your reciprocal button and you hit plus again. So, so far, this first line and the second line match up with what we're doing mathematically. The next resistor is 680, so tap in 680 and hit your reciprocal key right there. Is there anything else to add after that third reciprocal? Nothing else to add. So if there's nothing else to add, now hit your equals there, followed by the whole quantity being reciprocated right there and right there. And if you do this in the sequence that I've asked you to, your total ohms should be less than 470. So the question goes to Isaac. What do you calculate? Isaac, turn off your microphone. I calculate, one second, I'm typing it in. Well, you should have been typing it in as I was speaking. I was uh, 4.6 two kilos ohms. Uh, let's review how you've typed this in. Okay. So as I've written it, clear your calculator. Yep. So as I've, as I've, and, 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 and look at my screen and don't speak because then your microphone will take over. I need everybody to see the screen. So key in nine, key in 980, hit your reciprocal key, hit plus. Did that. Then key in 470, reciprocal, and hit plus. Then key in 680, reciprocal, then equals. Then hit reciprocal key one more time, and hit equals one more time. What does the display of your calculator show you now? 216 and 51. 216 and 51. Yeah, and what are the units if we're looking for resistance? The numbers are right, what are the unit? Ohms, correct. So 216.51 ohms is what we should have. Is everybody okay with how to do that calculation? You need to feel confident in how to do this, okay? Okay, so there happens to be, uh, so I've done this uh, twice with you and hopefully you've been able to do this as well. Well, it turns out you have some additional practice available to you via our PowerPoint. So let me come to here. Okay, so on our PowerPoint screen, I just went through these calculations with you. So when we were calculating the first set of resistors, we ended up with 9.23. There's your 9.23. When we calculated the second set of resistors, we ended up with a total of 216.51, and Isaac was able to verify that. Well, guess what you get to do? 
is there on the next slide, uh, right here, next couple of slides, is there more practice? Yes, you will do that. We're not going to do that here. Um, is there right here even more practice? Yes. So I've got two additional slides of practices with very specific calculator button pushes with answers you should expect to get at the end, okay? So you need to practice those before you uh, dive into the homework assignment. Uh, there happens to be some shortcuts that we want to bring to your attention, and the shortcuts are, are handy from time to time. When you, have your, when you have only two resistors, as shown in this picture, when you only have two, you can use a shortcut. Some people think it's a shortcut. Some people don't like it uh, and prefer reciprocal formula, but some people like it, and that's called product over sum. When you have only two resistors, you can take the first resistor times the second resistor, divide by the sum of the first resistor added to the second resistor. So for example, if I have 20 ohms and 40 ohms as two resistors, could I do this using reciprocal? Always. Could I try this uh, shortcut? I could. And it shows you 20 times 40 gives you 800 on the numerator. 20 plus 40 gives you 60 on the denominator. You should end up with 13.33 ohms. The calculator sequence here and here, look at my display very carefully. A lot of students miss this calculation because they don't put in parentheses. If you don't put in the parentheses, this will all be totally wrong numbers. So it is 20 times 40 equals, then divide, then you have to use open parentheses, 20 plus 40, close parentheses to give you the correct answer. So try these guys out, try the product over sum. I've got two product over sum uh, calculations for you to play with. Another shortcut shown on the left-hand side of the screen, here's one that's really interesting also, this goes to show equal value parallel resistors. So whenever you happen to have resistors that are equal value, so for example, like a 3K equals 3K equals 3K, the RT is really fast and very easy to calculate. Because what you do here is you simply take the, the single value that is the same. So this would work out to be three kilo ohms, three kilo ohms is the uh, value that is the same in each of these branches. All you have to do is to take the one value of 3K and divide by the number of resistors that share that value. And in this case, it would be 3K ohms divided by the three resistors that share that value. And what value is shown here in the um, answer? Let me magnify this so you can see this a little better. It's shown as 3K ohms divided by three is equal to 1K ohm. So that's pretty fast math. You, you don't have to key this in for reciprocal function whatsoever. How about if you have three resistors that are all six ohms, six, six, and six? They're all equal. And what was the method? The method is to take the value of the resistor, which is six, and divide by the number of resistors that share that value, which in this case is six ohms divided by three. So this totals out to be two ohms. And again, these shortcuts on this shortcut page can be verified. They can be verified uh, through a reciprocal formula. You can always double check. Any questions about how to do your parallel circuit calculations? Because you have a couple of homework sheets that are assigned to you for parallel calculations. Okay. Uh, next order of business is a couple of things. Uh, some of you <coughs> who happen to be in my ESIS 51 class, the 51 class is a fabrication class, and I'm sharing the teaching responsibility of that class with Mr. Francis Reyes. Mr. Reyes is handling the, the lecture portion, and I'm handling the, the physical hands-on a lab portion. And some of you who are in that course uh, have been introduced to um, Tina TI. So let me find out 
who, uh, it's a good time to take a picture of all of our happy participants. So turn on your cameras for a moment so I can see your happy smiling faces. Let me take a picture for roll call because this is a good time for us to do this. Yay. Go here, go here. Oh, I gotta have my picture. Here, here, here's the thing. Um, how many of you, uh, but wave, wave at me, how many of you are, uh, are also in Mr. Reyes's 51 class other than Wei Ji? Isaac and Wei Ji, two students, and the rest of you don't happen to be. So you haven't been introduced to Tina Ti. You will be introduced to um, um, this. I'm going to introduce you right now to what we're going to use for electronic simulation. So let me go ahead and do this for a moment. Where's my mouse? There's my mouse. There's my mouse. And mouse. Yay. All right. Mouse has returned. So I'm going to grab a screen here and pull this guy out. Pull this guy here. Multi sim live. All right. I'm going to go here. Control C. And for our class, boom, it's now in the chat box for uh, Discord. It's now in our Discord. And I will also put it in our Zoom chat box. There, cool. Okay, so now it's a, you have the link on both um, Discord as well as in the Zoom chat box. Now, let me change screens here and show you something really exciting about multi-sim live. And I have a video on this also that uh, I can give you a link to in a moment. So where's my share screen? Here's the button and I want to go to, uh, let me select multi, come on. Get my mouse to here so that I can see it. There we go, this is the one I want. All right, can everybody see this nice light blue screen and it's called Discover Electronics. Wave at me if you see this. Cool, all right. So the link that I've sent you in the chat box and the link that I've sent you in Discord will take you to this online simulation uh, program. Multi-SIM without the live is what we use in our laboratories, uh, what we use in our classrooms for uh, electronic simulation building of circuits very handy to use when you don't have the big power supplies. Uh, the power supplies that, that we're using uh, on your boards are limited to five volts. They're really nice, but they are limited to five volts. Suppose we have a circuit for you to analyze that requires 12 volts. You're not going to get 12 volts out of this little guy, but in multi-SIM, you can. So let's go, let's go ahead and do this. Let me turn the radio off for just a moment. You want to sign up. You can create a free account. You would sign. Don't do it now. Um, and if you have some challenges along the way, communicate with me in Discord and I'll be happy to answer those questions for you. Don't do this now, but just watch the screen. You would do a sign up very similar to this when you click the sign up. It goes to you enter your, your alias, your first name, your last name. Uh, your, your role as student uh, company would be Chabot College. You type in your email address, you punch in a, a password, and you create an account. So um, what I'm going to do is, since I have an account created, I'm just going to log in. So when I log in, and what's nice about this is I, I have a, 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 a pseudonym. My pseudonym is I'm a sample and I have a password for I'm a sample under the Gmail. Click this and go here and log in. Now, it's 
pretty fast. What's really nice, the other thing that's really nice about this is you can do, you can use multi-SIM live on MacBooks. You can use multi-SIM live on PCs. You can use multi-SIM live on Chromebooks. So because it is an internet driven product, it doesn't matter what machine you're using. The platform is uh, based uh, on the, uh, on the cloud and you can use it no matter what piece of hardware you're using. The actual multi-SIM that we use in the classroom, however, is PC-based. So if you have a Mac, you won't be able to acquire the multi-SIM program uh, directly. But this works really well without having to buy anything. It's free. So I'm going to create a circuit. So circuits, um, I have some that I've already done let's see circuits my circuits okay and i am going to create a circuit it's a little blue button up here create and in a moment it'll give me the multi-sim live desktop and so here's the desktop and here's the tools that you have on the left hand side of the screen and here's the desktop that you're going to be working with so let me make this a little larger. There we go. And the most, so if, if I go to click this very first um, ground symbol, it opens up different things that I can pull in. I can pull in a ground, pull in connector junction. If I click the second one, the second one is sources and I have AC sources, DC source. So since we've played mostly with DC source, I'm gonna click DC and drag it and pull it somewhere here. Okay, so there, now I have a DC source. I'm gonna make this even bigger. Oops, bigger is the other way, Co. Bigger, all right, yay, we like bigger. All right, so now I have a DC source. The third box brings in devices. I have a capacitor, resistor, inductors, potentiometer is a good one. I'm gonna click on resistor and place a resistor right there, let's say and click on another resistor and place it right there, let's say, and click one more resistor and place it right there. So now I have three resistors that have been placed into my circuit. I can connect them, watch my mouse. My mouse on the screen is in the shape of a palm. It's ready to grab something. So if I come over to the voltage source and I click on it, it brings up these icons around the voltage source, which allows me to, if I hit the X, I'll get rid of it. If I wrote, this one rotates it, spins it around. So if I double click this, it opens up a dialog box on the far right hand side. It starts off as a 12 volt source. I'm gonna change this over here on the right hand side from 12 to 10. Boom, boom type in 10, hit enter. Now, the moment I hit enter, it has become a 10 volt source. Boom, right there. And on these resistors, on these resistors, if I double click the first one, uh, I can change the, the ohms, and I'm gonna change this to say four volts, the four ohms, just four. Enter, now it's four ohms. And this guy over here, I'm gonna double click and I'm going to change this guy to, um, let's say, 12 ohms. 12 ohms, boom. Now it's 12 ohms. And double click this guy. I didn't want 12. Okay. I'm going to have this guy go to, double click this guy and change this guy to 2 ohms. 2. And double click this guy and have this guy go to 8. You'll see something interesting in a moment. Eight or nine. Okay, then double click this guy, make this guy go to 10. So it's very fast how we can change some things around. All right, I like these values better. So now on the screen, you can see that we happen to have a two ohm, a 10 ohm, and an eight ohm resistor, yes? I can go to connect these guys together. So, oops, come back here. When I bring my mouse up to this node, the mouse will, in a moment, change to this thing that looks like a little spindle with a point, which allows me to draw a line, draw a line, click, 
and now I've made a connection with a wire. It shows up with a wire number one only because it's the first wire I've laid down. I'm gonna come over to the right-hand side, hit display and uncheck this box for the titles. I don't need that wire labeled, that number is a distraction. I click somewhere else to deselect. I now come over here, draw another wire, click, and deselect that so I don't have a wire number. One more up here, wait for my spindle, the thing to come on, there we go, click. And it labels wire three, again, I don't need the label there. And I'm gonna bring a wire connection from here back to here. And the wire four, again, I don't need that label, but I do want to grab this wire and see if I can pull this down, make this look more like this. I can grab this edge and pull this over and make it more like this. So help me out. Yusef, what are the total ohms of this in series? Apples, oranges? Checking, 20 ohms. There you go, 20 ohms, all right? So remember, we call out not only the number, we have to call out the units. We're talking about resistance. Resistance is measured in units of ohms. So you now have 20 ohms, all right? So, very quickly, uh, if I have 20 ohms, my R total equals 20 ohms, and my V total is given as 10 volts, yes? Can, I'm looking for a current calculation. What is my I total? Okay, now remember, how do you calculate I? How do you calculate current? You have to go back to your Ohm's Law circle, and I is equal to something. I is equal to what over what? The question goes to Brad. What is Ohm's Law formula for current? Give that to us, would you please? For Brad? Yeah, let me... Punch it in my calculator real quick. Well, I'm looking for, tell us, tell us what is the formula before. Oh, it's, it's um, volts, voltage divided by resistance. Exactly. Okay. So Ohm's law says current must be voltage divided by resistance. Now we have a voltage of 10, ohm, 20, 10 volts and we have a resistance of 20 ohms. So you, Brad gave us the formula. And uh, Jacques, Jacqueline, can you give us the calculation I total? Two amps. It's uh, 10 divided by 20, dear. You, I think you had it inverted. Yep. Uh, 500 milliohms. Sorry, milliamps. 500. There you go, 500 milliamps is the current, yes? All right, so if we've done this correctly, we should be able to see a few things. Uh, let's go ahead and do this on paper as well as on the, uh, the multi-SIM. So what we would do on paper is this. Let me change the share. We'll come back to multi. You know what, you're, what you see on the screen, on your individual your paper. Papers. Your paper. Okay, you see the paper? Good. Okay. That's paper. what I'm hoping for. And so we had a 2 ohms. We have, what, 10 ohms. And we have 8 ohms. And you have 10 volts. And so if we do a simple V, I, R, and this is a very fast chart for us to do an old friend. So we have R1, we have R2, we have R3, we have totals over here. And our R values were given as 2 omega, 10 omega, 8 omega, and we agreed that the total ohms was 20 ohms, and the voltage here was 10 volts. And you want to double check to make sure you're confident that 20 ohms is in fact your total, as well as uh, the calculated current of 500 milliamps. And let's double check that to make sure that we are confident with that. Take your 10. Let me come up a little way so you can see this a little better. 
Okay, so we're gonna take our 10 and divide by 20 and hit engineering. And yes, we see 510 power negative three, there's your 500 milliamps. And by calculating this twice, how does, how does this help us fill in? What would we fill in next, Rodrigo? What would we fill in next on this sheet? We just calculated total current twice. We're happy with this number. So how do I fill in the rest of this sheet? Uh, you could fill in the rest of the current the same because it's a series circuit. Yes, precisely. Because we remember in a series circuit, this current's the same. But before we fill this in, did we double check this by calculating it a second time? We just did. We're confident of this. Now we can fill this in. 500 milliamps, 500 milliamps, and 500 milliamps. Just like that. Now, what would be the next thing that we would do, uh, Weiji? We calculate the voltage for each resistance by using okay. the uh, Ohm's law. Ohm's law would be the method, yes. And so to review, here's the circle for Ohm's law, V, I, and R. So to calculate the V, I cover up the V, and that would be equal to what? It's left over, Weiji? Uh, I times R. Correct, I times R, right there. So that would be equal to voltage. So this I times this R will give me the voltage. So for the first row, for the first row, I got 500 milliamps times two ohms. What do you calculate when you key in 500 milliamps times two ohms, Brad? Brad? I got one per volt, one volt. One volt, which would be correct. And here's another way to think about this. Here's the fast way to think about it, even without using your calculator. 500 milli, isn't 500 milli half of an amp? Think about that, is 500 milli, 500 over a thousand, isn't that 0.5? Isn't 0.5 half? What is a half times two? One. Hmm. Use mama's math, mama's calculator, the one between your ears. How about this? 0.5. 500 milliamps is 0.5. What is 0.5 times 10? It's Everybody use five. mama's calculator. Five. Gotta be five. Gotta be freaking Bingo, five. it's five right there. Wow. How about half times eight? Maybe what is half of eight? Something. Four. Four. No, better not be 40 because <laughs> we're only starting with 10, okay? So we can't ever have a voltage more than the total. But So half times eight, half of eight is four. So the way I've set up these ohms, I've made this, this is an easy one volt, five volt, four volt. And how do we know these voltages are good? Well, they should add up to give us 10. Do I have proportional distribution? Does the smallest ohms right here have the smallest voltage? Yes. Does the largest ohms here have the largest voltage? Yes. Is everybody happy with the VIRs on this chart? Yes, I hope so. Now, can we transfer this voltage information up to our schematic? We have here one volt, we have here five volts, we have here four volts, yes? I'm gonna add in the schematic. I'm gonna add into the schematic right here a point A, Right here, a point B. Right here, a point C. Right here, a point D. I'm going to put a ground right here. This is point E, and this is point F. Hmm, does this look remarkably similar to one of your homework assignments this week? Does this look remarkably similar to a circuit uh, G and H? where you're asked to look at voltages at specific points, not only the voltage drops for a VIR chart, but also voltages at very specific points measured with respect to ground. And I put the ground here. So before we get excited with anything else, we wanna pull out our red pen. Here's my red pen. 
and I'm going to mark polarities around this particular schematic. So watch very carefully. How do I start marking polarities on any of my circuits? Where's my starting point? Where's my reference to begin marking polarities? Isaac, do you remember? Where do I, what, what tells me how I can first mark polarities around any schematic? Um, the voltage. The voltage source. We want to use the, the, the word voltage source, okay? Voltage and source. I have a voltage source. Yeah, the source. And what aspect of this voltage source will tell me what polarities to mark, Isaac? Um, which way there's the flow is plate. going? Well, yeah, there's a long plate and a short plate. So which plate is positive, which plate is negative? Is The, uh, the long one. plate is positive and the short plate is negative. Excellent. Everybody clear with that? The long plate is positive and the short plate is negative. Very good. Next question goes to Robert. So, Mr. Benavides, this is how we've marked the voltage source. Which plate, from which plate do the electrons leave, Mr. Robert Benavides? Counterclockwise? No, from which plate is my question, yes. You're, uh, you're correct with the direction. But which plate do the electrons leave? The positive. Or negative? The electrons always leave from where they share the same polarity. Electrons have what polarity? What polarity are electrons? Glass. Negative. Negative. They're negative. So electrons have to leave the negative side of the source. Are we clear on that? If electrons are negative. They have to leave the negative side of the source. Do I have an arrow showing coming from the negative, flowing to the right, flowing here, flowing here? What happens at this corner E? It wraps to go upwards like so. What happens with the current reaches D? It's got a wrap to go to the left. There, 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 there. What happens at node A? It wraps to come back down to the positive plate. Now, I gave you the definition of electron current flow. Does electron current flow leave the negative side of the source? Does it flow through the circuit and end up back at the positive side of the source? The answer is yes. So Mr. Benavetti's anticipated the next question, electron current in this case flows clockwise or counterclockwise? And he said counterclockwise. So electron flow equals CCW, which is correct. Now the next question is even more important. The next question is how do we mark the polarities on either side of the resistors for the schematic. How do I mark these polarities? So the question goes to um, what, Rodrigo? Do you remember? How do we mark the polarities across these resistors? Um, by the flow of electrons. By the flow of electrons is correct. So let's take a look at the third resistor, this eight ohm resistor. I have a right lead and I have a left lead. I have a right lead where the current comes in. I have a left lead where the current comes out. What polarity should be this lead of the resistor on the right? Uh, negative. It should be negative. How many people agree it should be negative? Raise your hands or give me an aff affirmation. One, two, three, two, three, three, yes. It should be negative on the side. How many people don't understand why it should be negative? Yeah, can you explain that? Uh, I'm kind of lost on that part. Yeah, I, gave, I wrote the definition before about electron current flow, and it's got to be in your notes. Electron current flow. Okay, so the definition for electron current flow, there were two parts. One part, electron current always flows from negative plate of Vs comma through the circuit comma to the 
positive plate of Vs. That's one part of the definition of electron current flow. That has to do with sources. The second part pertains to answering the question that we, that we just addressed, and that is electron current always flows from the negative side of a device, comma, through that device, comma, to exit the positive side of that device. And if that wasn't written in your notes from our last meeting, um, then it should have been, okay? But if you happen to have missed it, it is now written again. And it's got to be in your journal, because this is absolute. You need to have this firmly entrenched in your um, understanding of, of this level of electronics to be very successful in all other classes of electronics. Okay? Okay. So electron current always flows from the negative side of a device through that device to exit the positive side of that device. Here it is. It's entering the right-hand side, goes through it, exits the left-hand side. So the side that it flows into must be, according to this definition, according to this definition, which side? Robert. Uh, so can, you, can you say that again, please? Look at, my, look at my screen. Electron current always flows from what? The negative side of a device through that device to exit the positive side. It's entering the right hand side. Therefore, it must be the negative, the negative side. Yeah. Through it and it exits the positive side right there. Yes. And by right. the same token, this will be negative, this will be positive, this will be negative, this will be positive. Do I have the positive side of that resistor attached to the positive side of the source? That is a good thing. Do I have the negative side of this resistor attached long way around to the negative side of the source? That is a good thing. So everything conforms to match these definitions that I've just written down. Now, we are interested in confirming several things. We are interested in confirming the voltage at point A. What is my voltage at point A? Well, when you see a voltage specified to a single point, that means we're going to put the red probe on that letter that is shown. But where the heck does the black probe go? The black probe goes to ground, OK? So the black probe goes to ground. The red probe goes to point A. Well, point A is here. So if I count, if I look at point A, and there's my ground, what exists between these two probes of your voltmeter? You're going to bring the red probe towards the black probe. And as you bring the red probe towards the black probe, we encounter what polarity first? Everybody. Negative. Positive. 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 The red probe is being brought towards the black probe, the very first polarity the red probe sees on its way down is, I've marked this as being positive. Positive what value? 10 volts. So one way of reconciling this is the short path, and this reconciles to be positive 10 volts. But we also said there's another path going between the two. Could we go the long way around? Yes, and the long way around is going to take us from here, this way, to this polarity, this voltage, plus this polarity, this voltage, plus this polarity, this voltage. What do we get when we go the long way around? So the very first thing we encounter with our red probe as we go the long way around is what polarity here? 
positive what one volt and we're going to add it to a positive five volts we're going to add it to a positive four volts and we come all the way around so by doing this we have positive one volt and we're going to add that to positive five volts we're going to add that to a positive four volts and we will end up with a positive 10 volts going that way around yes all right how about at point b if we're interested in what happens at point b v at point b means now the red probe is going to be here here's point b where's my black probe the black probe is at ground so how do i determine the voltage between b and ground well, there's two different ways to go. I can go to the left and down, or I can move to the right, down, and then back over to the left. Let's take the short path. The short path means I'm gonna go from B towards A and A towards ground. What polarity does the red probe see as I move towards the left? Jacqueline? Negative. Negative, and how much voltage does it see? One volt. Correct. Then we're at point A. So I'm going to write down it sees a negative one volt, and I'm going to add that to. And what's the next pro? What's the next polarity that it sees, Jacqueline? Positive. Positive. What value? Ten volts. Ten volts. So what is a negative one volt plus a positive ten going to give us, class? Isn't that going to be a positive 9 volts? Correct? All right. Now that's the voltage at point B. How about the voltage at point C, my friends? The voltage at point C is even more interesting. Uh, actually, at point B, we should do one more. At point B, we should do this uh, one more time. Uh, so at point B, let's go the, the other way around. If we go the other way around, if I go this way around, what do we encounter? Follow my polarity, Wei Ji, what polarity does it see first moving towards the right? What do we see there? Positive. And how many volts? Five volts. So we have a positive five volts. We're gonna add that to, now we're over here. And as we continue moving this to the right, what polarity do we see here? Positive. It's a positive and what value are we adding? Four volts. Four volts. So what's a positive five plus a positive four going to be equal to? Nine volts. Positive nine volts, which is what we calculated going the short way around is equal to the, what we calculate the long way around. So far, so good. Uh, one other point of interest. Let's come over here. How about the voltage at point C? The voltage at point C says we're going to put the red probe at C. We're going to put the black probe at ground. So help me out with this. Mr. Diaz, help me out with this. If I go this short path to the right to ground, what does the what is the red probe going to read? So from here, I'm moving to the right. What polarity does it see? Uh, positive. Moving to the right, yes. He's a positive what value? Four volts. Four volts, and now it's on this side. So the very first thing it sees is a positive four volts. Now we're at point D. We need to continue here. What do we see between D and E? Brad. Uh, Any voltage drops between D and E? No. Nothing. There's no resistor there, right? There's yeah. only a wire. So D and E are the same. How about between E all the way over to ground? Do we have any voltage drops along that wire? No. 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 So the voltage at point C is only going to ever be positive 4 volts. Let's try the other direction. So here the red probe is at C, black probe is at F, and now we're going to analyze what happens when we count the, the values of these voltages moving in this direction to the black probe. And so Isaac, help me out here. Isaac, we're at point C right now, and we're gonna be moving our red probe to the left 
and then down to the ground. So when I move my red probe to the left, what is the first polarity we see? Negative. Negative what value of voltage? Five volts. Okay, so I'm gonna write down, it sees a negative five volts, and I'm gonna add it to, so we went from here through this guy to here. Now I'm at point B, and I've gotta continue my way to ground. So Isaac, moving to the left, what polarity does it see? Positive one volt. No, I'm, moving, moving, I'm moving to the left, pal. So it, it doesn't see this because that's oh, going to the right. negative. Yeah. Exactly. It sees negative, the negative one volt. What value. Okay, so I'm going to add a negative one volt. Now I'm at point A. Now at point A, now I'm going to come down. So at point A, when I come down, what polarity does it see? Negative 10 volts. What does it see? What am I pointing at? Oh, positive 10. Okay. So, oh, it's always the red probe, what the red probe sees as we move it towards the black probe. The black probe is, is, is always going to ever be at ground in this case. So we are going to add this to a positive 10 volts. When we go to do this mathematically, what is a negative 5 plus a negative 1 plus a positive 10? What's that going to give us? 4. Yeah, positive or negative? Positive four. Positive four volts, because positive is bigger, which is what we calculated earlier, yeah? So are we feeling really good that we understand that we have a voltage at point A that's gonna be 10 volts? Are we feeling pretty good that we have a voltage at point B that's gonna be a positive nine volts? Are we feeling pretty good that we'll have a voltage at point C that's gonna be four volts? How about the voltage at point D? What's that going to be? The voltage at point D is going to be equal to what? Question goes to uh, Yusuf. What do you think? The red probe goes to point D, right there, point D, and the black probe goes to ground, right there. Black probe goes there. So what do you think is going to be the voltage between this point all the way to ground? Yusuf? I have no idea. 10 volts? Well, it's not a guess. I want you to look at the schematic and you can determine this, okay? So the way we've been doing this is you take the red probe and you move it through the circuit until you hit the black probe. So let's try moving it downwards. So from the red probe from here at point D, we go downwards to point E. Do we have any voltage drop between D and E, yes or no? No. Yes, no. None. So we have a zero that we're adding between here and here. Yes. How about between E all the way to F? Do we have any voltage drops there? It would also be a zero. It would also be a zero. So between D and E going the short way around, you would say zero volts. Now let's go the long way around and see what happens. If we use the same method, again, it's not a guess, this is methodical. And my method is to move that red probe towards the black probe. We went, the, we went this route, it was a zero. Now let's go across the top of the circuit, Yusuf, and then down. Now, as I'm moving to the left from point D, what's the first polarity we see, Yusuf? It's a negative. Negative how many volts? Four volts. Okay, so that's going to be equal to negative 4V, and I'm going to add it to, now I'm at point C. Now at point C. So we're going to get another negative 10 down. now? I'm going to see a negative what here? Negative 5 volts, sorry. I'm going to add a negative 5 volts. Now I've gone through that resistor. Now I'm at point B. At point B, I'm going to continue moving to the left. I encounter what polarity? Negative 1 volts. Negative volts, I'm going to add a negative resistor. 1 volt. Okay, now I'm at point A. I'm not at ground yet. I'm at point A. So at point A, I'm going to move my red probe from here down to ground. What polarity do I encounter on the way down? Yeah, you're hitting the positive side of the battery or the voltage. Yes. And what value positive? Uh, it's a 10-volt battery. Exactly. So we're going to add a plus 10 volts right here. So huh. now I've got a negative 4 plus a negative 5 plus a negative 1, add a positive 10. What do I have? I have a complete circuit. Which is what value of voltage from D to ground? 
I have no idea. <laughs> zero or no, 10? No, right here, you know, add this up. Negative four it's plus zero. negative five, negative one plus a positive 10. Yeah. Does all that add up to zero as well? Yes, it does. Sure it does. So you see, it's not a guess. It's a matter of following the red probe where we place it. In this case, we placed it at D and moving it towards ground and counting the values along the way. Okay, that was the method. In each of these instances, that was the method. So we now have voltage at point A at 10 volts, voltage B at nine, voltage C at four, voltage at D. We're feeling pretty good that it's gonna be a zero. All right, follow this information back to this screen here. Um, I'm gonna take the share off of here and go to back to our friend multi-sim, multi-sim, boom, right there. On this, this is our circuit. This is a simulator. This will allow us to measure a bunch of different things. This little green dot with a, with a little point are our probes. If I click on this, I can analyze any of a number of different things. I'm gonna grab this voltage probe and I'm gonna put one right here. That's my point A. I'm gonna grab, click this, grab another one and put this at point B between these two resistors. That's probe number two. I'm gonna grab a third one voltage and place it right here. That's my point C between R2 and three. I'm gonna grab another one, boom, and put it right here. That's my point D. And I'm gonna grab a uh, current meter, click this and put this guy, uh, let's say right there. All right, so now I have a voltmeter at point A, a voltage probe at point A, one at point B, one at point C, one at point D. I didn't label them A, B, C, D, but this is how they match up with our schematic that we did on paper. And if I go to turn this, this little triangle, this is like a play button, and this is like a stop button. So this triangle pointing to the right is like a play or activate this simulator, and the square button is like a stop or deactivate the, the simulator. So watch this. Uh, I'm gonna hit split so that I can see my data on these and then hit play. And it will go through the analysis. Oh, did I not do a ground, silly me? Telling me I didn't put in a ground, which is correct. I need to put in a ground. So ground, I'll put this guy here and connect the wire, oops, connect the wire. There, now I have a ground, yay. All right, so this is good. Uh, we've gotten rid of that, thank you very much. Okay, so now let's look at this circuit again. There we are. Move this this way. And now hit the play button, play. All right, this is very interesting. I need to set the parameters of my display. So while this is playing, uh, scroll down. And if you take a look at the voltages, minimums and maximums, what's my voltage source? 10 volts. So I'm gonna set this to a maximum of 12 and minimum, I just, minimum is zero. So we just hit zero. So we just start at zero and then hit enter and my scale will change. There we go. So what did we predict the voltage at point A to be in your notes? Wasn't point A specified at 10 volts and do we not have a green line right here lined up with 10 volts? Because this scale over here shows us voltage. Isn't that cool? What was the voltage we calculated at point B? Does this display here show you 9.00V? Does the graph also show a blue line right at nine volts? Pretty cool. And how about the voltage at point C? 
didn't we verify that point C would be four volts? Does the probe in the schematic with this darker blue show 4.00 volts? Take a look at the graph. Does the graph show us four volts? This blue line match right up at four volts. Isn't that cool? And one more thing, didn't we put the probe right here at uh, point D and we said that it should be zero volts because it's effectively connected to ground, should be zero volts. And don't we have that violet or purple colored line associated with this circle right at zero? Isn't that neat? That's pretty exciting, okay? So, so far, everything jives. And did our current calculate to be 500 milliamps? And does it show the letter I for current? Does it show 500 milliamps right in our little amp meter box? It does. So the power of, of multi-SIM live is that you can be building these circuits and putting in these probes to verify your calculations. We never use multi-SIM before analyzing. We always have to analyze on paper first with a VIR, and then we analyze voltages at specific points. Then we bring in our multi-SIM to verify. So here's an example of multi-SIM live that's available to you for free that you can use on any platform, whether it's uh, Apple, uh, computer, or Chromebook, or PC. Uh, and um, it works. We're going to use it more extensively than uh, Tina, and we're go also going to use it in the laboratory. We're going to use the, the full strength version of this in the laboratory. Okay, any questions regarding multi sim live, my friends, and how to do uh, some analysis with these voltages at very specific points? <laughs> Wei G, Robert, Yusuf, Brad, Shaki, Isaac, you okay with all of this so far? I think when you start playing with it, you should be all right. And I do have uh, several uh, YouTubes. And what, you, what we need to do, what we should have done earlier, let me put this in the stop mode. So I hit the little square for a stop. And then what we should have done much earlier when we were building all of this was this. If I click this little checkerboard symbol up here, I can save as, see, so right now it says it's an untitled circuit, right? You want to save all your circuits. So this one would be a, and we'll label this as a series 3R for three resistors. It's a series circuit, three resistor, and then by IMA sample or whatever you want to put down for your name. And I'll just, since I already have it built by Sam, I'm a sample, I'll just put Kogai, okay? But you should have your name. And the moment you click okay, guess what? Does that name, after it saves it, does it appear in the title of the circuit? Yes. And the beauty of this, this is, mouse has gone wonky on me. Uh, does it appear it should appear in the title bar. And here's the thing, move this back over here, is when you go to close this and, and look at your library of circuits, I can go to my circuits and you can build up a library and you can see all the variety of different circuits that you will be accumulating and that we will be building together multi-SIM live, it's in, uh, well, I filled in this page and I've got more on the next page. Okay, well, in the, yeah, that's my second page. Um, so you will be building a number of circuits in simulation. You will be building a lot of circuits by hand in the laboratory. You will be measuring with uh, uh, current meters when we get back. Um, you do know that next Monday is a holiday, so we will not be meeting next Monday in class. Uh, but there will be activities for you to do. And since we're going into a holiday weekend, uh, I will be extending the due dates uh, a little longer. So give you a little more time to do things and or probably assign some additional things. So, uh, you know, what's my middle name? Flexible up to a point. So don't 
you, you should all have all of your week one and week two stuff done um, and up to date. Week three, we can be a little flexible uh, in terms of uh, time frame for those due dates. Okay, my friends, any questions that she, any of you have uh, before I let you go? All right, you guys are on track. I'm proud of you guys. You're doing a great job from all the work that I've seen so far. So uh, one more shot before we part company. Show me your smiling faces. This one is, yay. Oh, I got to change my camera so I can be smiling also. That's more fun. Hello. Uh, stop the share, Co. 